Alrighty guys, welcome back to another scripting tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to make a timer GUI in Roblox Studio. So let's get started. Okay guys, so the first thing we're going to want to do <clears throat> is we're going to want to come up to here to replicated storage and we're going to add a string value. Once you've inserted your string value, rename it to status. <clears throat> And then we're going to come over to Stutter GUI and make our screen GUI. So this is going to be our timer GUI. This is going to display the time remaining in our variable. I'm going to make mine 500 by 70 in size, and I'm going to recenter it, find the green line, and I'm going to make it about 80 duds off the top of the screen. And I'm also going to set the anchor point to 0 0.5. So it scales on most screen sizes. Once we've done that, we can just customize our GUI as we like. So I'm going to make my, my text uh, source sans bold so it's easier to see. I'm just going to change it to status underscore value. You, in the actual script, you won't see this. This is just for Studio. I'm going to make text scaled, and I'm going to change the text color, text color to white. Don't worry. I'm going to make the background color, and I'm going to make that. Uh, I'm just going to make that turquoise. Uh -huh. I'm going to come back down to. Right, I'm also going to make the text stroke transparency zero, so it's easier to see the white against the blue. And last but not least, I'm also going to make the border invisible. Now, once we have our GUI, we need to insert a local script under the text label. Okay, so first of all, we need to get the replicated, we need to get the status value out of the replicated storage. So how we can do this is first we need to define a replicated storage value, and then we need to find the status value inside of it. So what we can do is local replicated storage equals game colon get. We want get service, not get children. And we want to find replicated storage. After that, we're going to make a new variable for our status value. I can't type today. Equals replicated storage colon wait for child status. So now we have our status value. And we can change the status value from our main script later. So this script is going to display the value of the status value on our GUI. So what we can do is we can do script dot parent dot text is equal to status dot value. So now if I click play, obviously our GUI has no text on it because our status value is currently nil, as you can see. But you see, if I click, if I change this, if I change it to say nil, let's see, it's not updating. So how we can um, update this is we can do status colon get property change signal. Now what this does is it's going to fire a function every time the property that is the value. So every time the value of our status changes, we're going to um, change the text on the GUI to whatever that new value is. And then, so between these brackets and parentheses, we need to put value, because that's what's changing. Then we need to connect a function, and another pair of parentheses, and drop a line. Once we've done this, all we have to do is copy and paste this line of code up here, and put it inside our function. All right, so now if we click play, and if I come to the ripcase storage, the status, and if I change the status as value, I'm going to say new value in the value, and boom, there it is. So now our status value is updating on our GUI. 
Next, we need to actually code the timer in a server script. So close off your local script, come over to server script service and just insert a normal script, not a local script. First thing we need to do here is actually get the last two variables. Actually, come back to your come back to your local script and copy and paste the two top variables, the status variable and the replicated storage variable. Copy and paste these two variables into your script, into your normal server script service script. And once we've done that, we need to set a couple more variables. So my first variable is going to be local equal uh, local uh, wait time. So wait underscore time is going to be equal to one second. This is how many seconds in between each number when it ticks down. So we're going to go three, two, one, and it's going to wait three. It's going to wait one second for this wait time in between each time it minuses a number. So next we need to make another variable for our timer time. So we can just put local timer underscore time is equal to, so this, this is however long you want your timer to tick down for. So for me, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to make mine 10 seconds. After we've done that, we need to put, we could theoretically put it in a for loop on its own and it will run one time. But if we want it to run infinitely, we need to put it in a while true do loop because the condition is always true. This condition right here, it's always going to run. And now what we need to do is we need to start a for loop. So we can just do for i equals timer time. As you can see up here, our variable comma zero comma minus one do. So now i is equal to our timer time. So later we're going to be adding it to the text value. So timer time is going to be ticking down by one, uh, by just just by one, um, every however long. So we can put wait, wait underscore time. So now it's going to be waiting for my variable one second. It's going to be waiting one second before it counts down for the next number. So what we need to do next is set our status value to uh, time. All we have to do is status dot value equals and then parentheses. And I'm just going to make mine time left and I'm going to put a couple of spaces. And then I'm going to put, uh, we're going to concatenate. If you watch my concatenating video, you'll understand what I'm doing here. I'm just going to go dot dot i. Because i is the value of our timer, you see. Instead of putting timer dot underscore time, i is actually carrying our variable's value. If once our timer ends, what we can do is we can just add a little uh, data but value equals times up. And then I'm just going to leave that little message on the screen for three seconds. And then all we have to do now is click play. As you can see, the time left is changing. Our variable is um, carrying the number and time's up. And of course, it's in a while true do loop. So this is going to run infinitely. Nine, eight. Obviously, you could incorporate this into some kind of round game or anything like that that requires a timer. Anyways, guys, that's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed, like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on the bell to, so you don't miss any more of my videos. Other than that, thank you guys so very much for watching. See you next time.